Hello everyone, this is CRH Films. Today, I'm going to tell you about the 2010 movie, The Book of Eli. A lone wanderer navigates a completely devastated Earth following a nuclear conflict. He travels through settlements that were thriving with life just a few years ago and the wasteland now teems with marauders, as he has a special mission. Eli walks along a road that leads to a highway, which is completely cluttered with wrecked cars. In the distance, he notices a house and decides to visit the building to restock his supplies. However, he finds neither water nor food there. Only a couple of decent boots left by a person who chose to depart from this world. Eli decides to prepare dinner for himself but even the harsh post-apocalyptic world doesn't drive him to cannibalism. He cooks a cat he recently caught in the woods. Eli dines and also shares his provisions with a little mouse. Before sleeping, he listens to his favorite song. The protagonist rises with the first rays of the sun and continues his journey. Soon, he encounters a girl, but she is just bait. Marauders demand his back. Eli implies that it would be better for the bandits to leave, ensuring no harm befalls anyone. However, the bandits refuse to let him go. Eli is forced to explain that they're going about things the wrong way in this life. He leaves the girl alive and continues his journey westward. Shortly after, he spots marauders again but can't help due to their superior weaponry. On his path lies one of the few settlements with people who managed to survive the apocalypse. Eli enters a local mechanic's place to recharge his battery, in exchange for a lighter and a few packets of spices. The man asks Eli to show his hands since those who engage in cannibalism tend to have trembling hands, which is undesirable here. Suddenly, Eli notices the same gang of marauders. It turns out they work for the town's mayor, Carnegie. They bring him books, but the specific book he needs isn't there. Meanwhile, Eli visits a local bar to replenish his water supply. While Eli waits for his water, one of the gang members decides to provoke him. However, the main character makes it clear that it's not wise to mess with him. After that, everyone present wishes to take him down. Eli activates a berserker mode and sends all of them to meet their maker. Solara, who brought water to Eli, pleads for the horror to stop. Carnegie also witnessed all of this. He's impressed by the man's skills, so he doesn't kill him but invites him for a conversation. Carnegie offers Eli to join him because a warrior like him would be valuable. However, Eli declines, as his path leads westward. They suggest he stay for just one day, hoping he might change his mind. Eli is given a separate room and served a delicious meal. Carnegie understands that all this won't convince Eli to stay. He decides to send Solara to him. However, Eli can't do that with the girl, so he asks her to leave. Solara pleads with Eli not to kick her out because Carnegie will kill her mother if she returns right away. Solara accidentally notices the book and asks about it. But Eli doesn't want to answer the girl's questions and immediately hides the book. He suggests they share dinner, but only after saying a prayer. In the morning, Solara decides to pray with her mother before breakfast as well. Carnegie overhears all of this. He forces Solara to tell him about the book and the symbol on it. Realizing that it's the same book he's been searching for, he rushes to Eli's room, but there's no one there anymore. Eli takes his battery and tries to leave the town as quickly as possible, but he's only a few minutes short. Carnegie states that he needs a fighter like Eli, but the book is much more important. He'll do whatever it takes to get it. Eli responds that he's been looking for a place where they would appreciate this book, but he hasn't found such a place yet. Carnegie orders Eli to be killed. However, all the bullets miss him, as if he's under some invisible protection. On the other hand, each of the shots finds its target. Redridge is unable to do anything and lets Eli go. Soon, Solara catches up to him and asks to join him, offering to show him a water source in return. Eli replenishes his water supply and then locks Solara out, continuing his journey alone. Meanwhile, in the town, Redridge realizes that they're sacrificing lives for the sake of the book. He asks Solara to take him along as payment if he manages to get the book. Carnegie's gang sets off for a hunt. Solara manages to unlock the door. On her way, she encounters the same woman and tries to help her. The woman urges Solara to get away as quickly as possible, as it was another trap. But luck isn't on the bandit's side again, as Eli is also present. From this point on, their fates intertwine. Carnegie and his gang find the bodies of the bandits. He realizes that he's moving in the right direction and that both Eli and the book are nearby. 
Evening sets in. The duo decides to rest. Eli explains that after the war, this book remained in its last copy, and the war itself was aimed at eradicating religion. One day, he heard a voice that led him to the book and told him to head west, as there's a place where both Eli and the book would be welcome. The next day, the duo stumbles upon an isolated house. They decide to explore it, hoping to find supplies, but before they reach the house, they fall into a trap. The owners of the house invite Eli and Solara to have tea. After that, the elderly couple takes their guests to the backyard to show what happened to their unfriendly visitors. Eli realizes that the elderly couple ate those people and that they are cannibals. He tells Solara that they need to leave as quickly as possible. However, the sudden appearance of Carnegie on the horizon changes everything. The old man retrieves his arsenal and prepares to defend the house. Eli throws a bomb under the pretense of the book. A shootout ensues involving all sorts of weapons. The elderly couple departs this world, while Eli continues to evade bullets as before. However, Carnegie's gang manages to flank Eli. Carnegie demands the book, threatening to kill Solara. Eli reveals where he hid the book, then receives a bullet. After that, Carnegie and his group head back to the town, leaving Eli alone with his wounds. But Solara can't let Eli die. She attacks the driver, causing the car to perform remarkable acrobatics. Solara takes a grenade, precisely tosses it, rendering another car and its passengers incapacitated. She takes the wheel and speeds to Eli's aid. Due to low fuel, Carnegie decides to return to the town. When Solara returns to the ruined house, Eli is no longer there. Despite his injuries, he continues his journey westward. Together, they reach a seemingly untouched area amidst the war. They board a boat and head for an island. The wounds start to take their toll, prompting Solara to take control. On the island lies a sort of ark for all of humanity, filled with countless works of art, but most importantly, the Bible is missing. Eli claims he has it, though it's a bit worn. It turns out the Bible he guarded so fervently was in braille for the blind. This fact enrages Carnegie. Eli, despite being blind all along, managed to endure all hardships, as he had God by his side. Meanwhile, Carnegie tries to get his wife to read the Bible, as she is also blind and understands Braille. However, due to his mockery and mistreatment of her and her daughter, she refuses and leaves him. This is the worst thing that could have happened to him. From this point on, Carnegie loses his authority in the town. Eli manages to recite the entire Bible, completing the collection in the library with the much-needed book. Eli's journey concludes here, while Solara's path is just beginning.